hell. The Pet Clinic on today, sponsored by PetFixClub.com. Love your pet? Join the club. You're welcome back to the show now with more families staying at home right now. The demand for new puppies has increased and even the cost has too. Would you believe they're selling now for five times more than what they did this time last year? Anyway, Pete, the vet is here to tell us all. Pete, how are you, sir? You're very, very welcome Thank to the you show. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Now, I put myself into this uh, frame as well uh, and other people at home, Pete, are under a bit of pressure to get a dog from the kids at home. Anyone who's thinking about this, where should they start? Well, do you know, the, the first thing I'd say to people right now is wait, because there's been so much demand very recently that it's just about impossible to get the dog or the puppy that you want. Mm -hmm. So I'd be really saying, look, let, wait for the summertime, wait for three or four months to pass, and I do think it'll get easier to find the dog that you want at okay. that stage. So you may fall into a trap now, if you, if, you, if you want it now and if you want to get it now. The demand is so high and the supply is so poor that it's a high chance that you'll be fooled by somebody who's got one of the few pups that's, that, that's around, mm -hmm. um, a puppy farm type dog, which will be disguised as a family dog, and you'll fall into that trap and you'll end up with problems later. The big issue with puppy farms isn't just that they're poor quality, so they're not mm -hmm. as healthy, so they might fall ill, but also they've usually been very badly socialised, mm -hmm. which means that they grow up into adult dogs. And it's been, this has been proven, mm -hmm. adult dogs that are very fearful and anxious, and then they become aggressive because they're so fearful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then they, they bite people at the age of a year, year and a half, and then there's a, there's a big crisis in the family. Okay. So stay away from puppy farm dogs, but we'll talk more about that in because, a minute. Because those dogs, in one sense, it's, it's where, I suppose, anxiety turns into anger. That's exactly what happens. Um, dogs aren't aggressive for no reason. Mm -hmm. They're aggressive often because they're frightened. Mm -hmm. And it's not the dog's fault, it's because they haven't spent the first 12 weeks of their life mm -hmm. being socialised as they should be because they're from a puppy farm. Okay. That's why you should avoid puppy farm dogs. Now, uh, should you adopt a dog? Would it be okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I think my first line in any case would be, don't think about that, the, the pedigree dog or the the, the, the designer breed, the little white fluffy dog that you have in your head, forget that. Um, there's loads and loads of lovely dogs in rescue centres mm -hmm. that don't fit the image that you have in your head, but they still make a yeah. great pet. Is there a stigma around them though? Because some people say, oh, they're a rescue dog, but I want the cutie one, as you were saying there yeah. as well. And people don't realise actually what a rescue dog looks like. I we have an image of it. Maybe. They do, they have an image. And they, they have this fear that in some way that something wrong with the dog because it was rejected in its mm -hmm. first home. That's absolutely not the case. Most rescue dogs have simply had a bad start in life mm -hmm. and they now need somewhere good to go. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I would say that I would look around the rescue centres in your area and just see what they have available and keep an open mind. Okay, so uh, you get the dog, you're pretty sure this is the dog you want. What else should you be looking for now, say from the advertisement or okay. something like that? So if, if you decide I'm actually going to buy a puppy, mm -hmm. then you are over to online advertising mostly these days. Um, and what I would say there is that there's a number of ruses that people who are perhaps selling puppy farms dogs, as in dogs um, bred in bulk, mm -hmm. in a sort of concrete pen environment, they know that people don't want to buy puppies from that environment, and so they, they fiddle things around to make it look like they're selling um, a genuine family puppy to you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be very aware of their tricks, mm -hmm. and you need to, to, to shop very carefully um, with that in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a very, very helpful website that's been set up by a group called the Irish Pet Adver Advertising Advisory Group, ipag.ie. We can see it there on screen. And that website has got uh, a checklist for you to go through. So when you look at an advert online, mm -hmm. you can literally tick each box to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. Mm -hmm. I think we can see that here now, Pete, as well. So you yes. have to check all of these. You find the dog you want or the dog mm. you think you want and go through this list and it, you should be able to tick all of them. Every single one. If you can't tick one of those boxes, then you should not take the puppy. There will always be another one. A lot of people, first of all, they think this is my only chance, I have to get this one. That's yeah. not the case. A lot of people also think, oh, the poor little dog, I have to rescue it. You don't need to rescue mm -hmm. it. There will be another answer for that puppy. What's really important is you're getting a puppy that's going to be with you for the next, I don't know, mm -hmm. 15 years. And part of the family, Pete. I exactly. So you want to make sure you do it right. Mm -hmm. So following those, that tick list is the best it's way brilliant. to make sure you're doing okay, it right. OK, you have the dog. Everything is great. Everything is all above board. You're all excited. But you have to take the dog home. Now, the first, the maiden voyage to the house is fairly important, isn't it? Yes. I mean, I, I think what you have to recognise is it's a very stressful time for a little puppy because 
puppies' minds are surprisingly similar to our own minds. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine this little dog has grown up with its mother there mm -hmm. and with its brothers and sisters all around it, and it's just learned to know this environment as its home. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, it's taken out of that environment, and it's with complete strangers, travelling in a car usually, and it's never been in a car before. Okay, so there's noise and in the car? Yeah, there's, there's noise and there's sounds yeah, and you're seeing different things movement, as well. There's yeah, movement and, 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 and different people and different smells. So it's very stressful for a dog. So there's some things you can do to make it better for them. Mm. And the first one, which is very simple, is ask the person who's, who's giving you the puppy to give you some, some, some of the bedding that the puppy is used to. Ah, oh, lovely, yes. Because that will carry a reassuring scent for the mm -hmm. puppy. That'll of, calm the dog down. It'll help them yeah, calm perfect. down and they, they'll feel much more relaxed mm -hmm. to know that there's a bit of home still with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, you also have to travel safely with a puppy. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest you get a carrier cage. I really like this type of wire mm -hmm. carrier it, cage. For, for transportation and for home, Peter, at the same well, time? Well, it doubles up, you see. When, when you mm -hmm. get home then, you mm -hmm. can... The puppy can travel in this in the first place, but when you get home, you can then put it into the, into, into the kitchen or mm. utility room or wherever your dog's mm -hmm. going to have its base. And this then becomes the dog's private bedroom. Yeah. And I love that idea. So um, you put into that the dog's bed, um, a water bowl, a food bowl, and some toys. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, the dog starts to, the puppy and the dog, they see that as their private bedroom. Mm -hmm. So if, if they get, I don't know, a bit tired or a bit fed up with everybody, they can go off to their little um, puppy crate and they can just yeah. chill out in their own bed. They can go to their trailer. Yeah, they, call, exactly. they, call, they call the movie stars. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a safe it. place for them, Pete. And that's, the, yeah. that's probably the most important thing, is it? It's a safe place for them. So they, when they go there, the, the five, six, seven, eight year old kids that are harassing them, those children are taught when the dog goes into their mm -hmm. den, you don't go near them. You give them space and give them peace. Yeah. So the dog learns that. If they want a bit of privacy and, and quiet yeah. time, they can go like there. Like the rest of us. And it doubles up also. Once they're happy being in there, you can then shut the door. So if you're going out for a while, yeah. you can leave them in there and your house is going to be safe. They're not going to be chewing all the furniture yeah, or messing anywhere. Mm. And would, would you put a blanket over it at night or anything, Pete? You, you don't generally need to. You don't have to. You, you don't have to. You could do. Mm. Yeah. It's also a very useful way of, of house training a puppy mm -hmm. because all puppies know instinctively not to mess in their own den. Mm -hmm. So if you have a puppy just loose in the kitchen, the puppy will, will recognise some of the kitchen as den, but mm -hmm. Over there in the distance, the far mm -hmm. corner of the kitchen, well, that's outside the den. So they'll very happily go and piddle over there. Yeah, where they're supposed you know? to. Yeah, but yeah. Then in their head, they think it's away from their den. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, instead, if you have a, a crate where they spend most of their time, mm -hmm. um, they won't go in the crate. And as soon as you take them out of the crate, um, you, you take them straight outside mm -hmm. and you wait with them. Yeah. And then they will go to the loo. And when they go, you say, what a good little dog. Yeah. And you give them a little treat. Yeah. And they'll learn, hmm, that was cool that I got a it's treat. It's behaviours. It's about behaviours, isn't it? It is, sense? it is. Okay. It's about rewarding behaviour. That's, Perfect. That's what it's all about. Peter, back in two weeks' time, what will we be talking about then? Um, we're, we're going to be focusing on food. I mean, we've talked about lots of things, and one thing that's important is that also that the person who sells you the puppy gives you some of the food that they've been feeding the puppy on. Mm. So for the first few days, you carry on feeding that particular food. Okay. And then you can gradually change over onto the kind of food you want, okay, yeah. such as the Pet Fix Club food, which, we're, which, which is over there as well. Perfect. And, and we're going to talk more about how you choose a good quality food um, when I come back in two Pete, weeks. you better give Kiko some there, because Kiko had the ears pricked there. Pete, thank you very much right. for being with us. Great. We'll thank catch you. up with you in two weeks' time again. Thanks. L. The Pet Clinic, on today. Sponsored by PetFixClub.com. Love your pet? Join the club.